Hey guys, welcome back to Vintage Iron Garage. Today I have a little bit of a product review for you, and it's something pretty neat. Today we'll be taking a look at my Eastwood powder coating system. So I've had this kit for a little while now. It's been sitting in the shop just waiting for the right time and the right excuse to get it out and get it going and use it on something. So, anyways, that time has come. We're rebuilding a, a carburetor for an old Ford lawn tractor. And figured why not go ahead and powder coat the body and powder coat the, the float bowl of it, making it look pretty. So that's what we're going to do. So in the box, we've got the high voltage power supply. We've got some manuals. I guess that's a filter. Um, i got to think about what that's for. Anyway, here's the gun. And it came with a couple more empty containers and then I've gone ahead and purchased some. And I purchased some aftermarket. Well, this came with some powder and I purchased some powder as well for it. Oh, and I realize this is a filter for the airline. Makes sense. Keep the moisture out. So over here in my paint supply cabinet are the powders that it came with. Along with uh, several more. It came with blue. There's some red. And black, I believe. And then there's some empty containers here some uh, that's some sort of high temperature tape yeah high temp fiberglass masking tape and a bunch of silicone plugs so I'm probably gonna need some of those and additionally I purchased three other colors of black now I had the idea of using those on perhaps some rims for certain projects I had in mind, but I never did end up doing that. But anyways, so there's a 20% gloss. There's matte black or flat black. And here's mirror black. So I think the idea was I wanted one super glossy a semi-gloss or satin, and then flat. And I also grabbed a silver, which is actually the silver for the GM truck rally rims from the 70s and 80s. And that was supplied by these fine folks here in Ontario. And for what I'm doing today, I think I'm going to go ahead and use the gloss black and I'll use the silver. I think I'll do the body of the carb and the silver and the gloss on the bowl. I think that'll look nice. So these would be our carburetor components we'll be working with today. The body and the float bowl. And I've got this little toaster oven. So I'm going to, as you can see, I had the, the timer knob uh, taped so it would just stay on all the time. So I'm gonna turn it on let it warm up while we set up everything else. So here's the setup. We've got the gun. I've got the filter on it with a airline adapter. There's the control box and you've got the trigger on the gun as well as this trigger that when you so when you're ready you push down on this button and that red light turns on on the box. Also I've got this grounding clip here so that'll get clipped to the parts or to what they are resting on, maybe a metal rack or tray or something. I'm just clipping it there for now to keep it in place. So here's the carburetor body. I've got it masked off and I've got some silicone plugs and all the holes that I don't want powder or paint to get into. And I got one plug in the bottom of that fuel bowl. And our oven's been warming up. I just turned it down. It was uh, 
getting pretty hot in here but I had the parts in there earlier and that was to preheat them to burn off any oils or any anything that's on them get them warmed up and burned off any contaminants and so I allowed everything to cool I pulled them out and masked them off and we're getting ready to shoot them with some powder now okay I've got the powder in the gun uh, oh I'm gonna hook up the the ground clip for a second. I'm just going to clip it to the throttle shaft just underneath the little tang so that if I end up with a bare spot it won't be too noticeable. And my air compressor is set at, well it says to set it between 5 and 8 psi so I've done the best I can to set it around there and this little filter is leaking a bit so there's a good chance my air compressor might kick on, but let's give this a try. Oh yeah, I need the trigger in my hand. <laughs> so I got the trigger. Uh, it's sort of working. Let's try and get the back side without bumping the camera. It says to use circular motions. sparkage okay that's on there pretty thick I think I suppose I could turn it around too this is my high-tech powder coating booth piece of cardboard folded on the table okay Actually, that's looking not bad. I'll give it a little more. I'm going to call that probably acceptable. Okay, we're going to quickly try and coat the float bowl. And I would just like to add that normally you are supposed to hang these parts, but I didn't really have somewhere convenient where I wanted to hang them and, and then getting them in the oven if they're on a wire, I thought. Because it's such a small oven it would make it more difficult and I end up knocking the powder off. So that's why I'm just laying the pieces down and like in this case I'm just laying it on a piece of wire and I'm going to try and clip my ground to that. Hopefully it'll work. Okay so I've cleaned out my gun with some compressed air. Got as much of the silver colored powder out as I could. I've got the black in the gun. I readjusted my air pressure. As I was saying, I readjusted my air pressure back down to 5 to 8 psi as best I could. Let's give this a shot. Maybe that was a little more than 5 to 8 psi. Oh well. It's working. I think we got full coverage. Okay, so I've got the oven on. It's just warming up again. And you got to be careful with your temperatures now. So, the two different powders I use recommend just slightly different temperatures. One wants to uh, so you got to get up to flow temperature and one says 375 the other says 400 and then cure temperature which is 350 and uh, 375 so I'm just gonna split the difference because it's so close anyway I think they'll both turn out uh, okay 
at least that's what we're going to try anyways. So right now, as it recommends, uh, so I'm just over 400. We're going to put them in, and then as soon as we see the powder flow, then we're going to turn the temperature back down to about 375. So there are the parts ready to go in. Okay, here we go. We'll turn them back now. Okay. I figured this would be the part where I drop them. And they're in. So it's hard to see on camera. It's even hard to see in real life. But right now they look kind of flat. And once they go kind of glossy, that's when we'll kick the tent back down. So there, they're starting to turn a bit glossy. The silver one doesn't look glossy yet, but the black does. I'll probably just give them a couple more minutes and then I'll turn that temperature down. Okay, so it was about five minutes. The black is looking really wet. And glossy and the silver is kind of so I've just turned the temp down and we'll just let them cure for exactly 20 minutes now okay it is time to take these out I'll turn off our oven I'll take our vice grip off the timer That's annoying. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a quick look here. Oh, uh, they look really nice. Okay, let me get them out of there. There. Quiet you. So there we go. Wow. They look pretty good. That silver didn't quite come out as shiny as I expected, but maybe that's because I didn't get it hot enough. Because uh, the black uh, glossed out a lot sooner than this did. So maybe if I'd had it at a higher temperature, this would have gone even shinier, but I kind of like it. It's actually almost perfect. It's It looks like a, a bare aluminum, more or less. And that'll be a nice contrast with the sort of matte or uh, I guess you would call it a satin aluminum color in the glossy black. It'll look pretty good. So anyways, we'll let these uh, parts cool and then we'll see about putting this thing back together. So there we go. There's our finished product. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, that's not helping out. <laughs> Anyways, I think it looks pretty good with the gloss black float bowl and the silver on the body. And so I haven't put the throttle back in because I need to make up a new bushing for up top here. So that old bushing was seized up and uh, I want to make a new one, make it move nice and free again. But there we go. So all the screws went back in, no problem. All the plugs came out. Didn't have any trouble. So, that went pretty good. That was my first time using this uh, Eastwood Powder Coat system, and I have to say it went really well. It took me, you know, one extra evening. You know, I'm busy, I work, I got other stuff, and you know, over the course of a week, one extra evening to make this thing look that pretty is not a waste of time at all. I could have just thrown it back together all dirty and crummy looking, but you know, taking the time to really clean it well and do this to it was well worth it. To me, that's beautiful. 
I'm really happy with how this turned out. I wish the, the finish would show up on camera a little bit better. Especially on that aluminum. There you go. You can kind of see the you know, bit of orange peel effect in the silver. And then the black is just pure glossy black. So I like the contrast of those two. I'm really happy. Turned out really well. The Eastwood DIY powder coating system. Eastwood, do the job right. <laughs> I'd say they lived up to their name this time. So there you go. In conclusion, I do recommend this do-it-yourself uh, powder coat kit. I'm happy with how this turned out. I really like the contrast between those, those two finishes. And then the brass screws and stuff had a nice, you know, nice touch to it as well. I gotta go. It's getting late. My uh, coffee's not gonna drink itself. And I'm sure my dinner's getting cold. So, till next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.